So we're here at the One Thing Conference in Kansas City where we've gathered 25,000 young adults to um, seek the face of God for three days. And um, we're here with Matt Lockett, who heads up Bound for Life out of DC. And we just want to take a few minutes just to really hear um, Matt's heart on the, uh, the the crisis that's facing the black community and, and uh, with abortion and what God is saying right now to African Americans in this nation uh, as far as taking a stand to see this death decree broken in our nation. And um, so we just want to, you know, introduce Matt and just take a few minutes to just hear his heart and and what what would be the charge uh, what is God saying to the to the to the African Americans on the issue of life in this hour so thank you Matt for joining oh this is great it's great that we could make time to do this uh, thanks for having me here with you um, I, I can confess to you with all honesty that the abortion issue wasn't important to me at all I've been a Christian for most of my life and and uh, it wasn't anything that was even on my radar but I was apprehended uh, by the Lord on this thing and by his heart on the issue. And this is the thing that most Christians don't like to stop and even really think about. We try to reason our way through it and we can come up with plenty of excuses. And, and probably most of the people watching this can go through their head and they can think of all the different difficult circumstances of life that would bring justification for you know, having an abortion. Um, but I got apprehended with God's heart on the issue. And believe me, he has a lot to say about it. And I'm not just talking about opening up and looking through scripture after scripture after scripture. I'm talking about the raw emotions of his heart. And that's really what got a hold of me. And, and uh, it's when I encountered that, when my heart touched his heart on that thing, that I was really kind of ruined really for the rest of my life. And and, uh, and so I've given my, myself to praying for the ending of abortion. And, and along this journey, I have been uh, just wrecked over the way I see the abortion industry targeting minority communities. And so it's, it's devastating for me as a father. I have four children myself. And, and it's devastating to me to see how an industry like the abortion industry can so overtly target the minority community. Planned Parenthood alone puts 76 percent of its facilities in black and Latino communities deliberately uh, you know they would make plenty of excuses to say that it's just needed I say it is a racially targeted agenda in our nation uh, it breaks my heart when I see how these things are happening and and they seem so overt and obvious and yet even within the minority communities themselves it just seems like there's a fail over it that the agenda uh, just is defying uh, exposure but I believe that things are changing and so um, I'm excited about what you're doing because it's bringing a, a, a distinct voice uh, of truth exposing what's happening but what you're doing is successful because I believe that a prayer movement in our nation is prevailing over the abortion agenda and over the spirit of death in our nation I believe that more Christians are now praying and fasting than ever before to see this death decree overturn the land. And so um, I'm excited to see what you're doing, but I know that if you're going to have any success on the ground, if you're going to have any success in, uh, on college campuses, and if truth is going to begin to permeate uh, the minds of, of, of young students and young women on these campuses, um, it's going to be the result of prevailing prayer and fasting. And so I'm really excited about the uh, Freedom Fast that's coming up in February. You know, if we're gonna if we're gonna talk about Black History Month, we got to talk about Margaret Sanger. Well, isn't that a fun subject? You know, and and you know, I to have one. I've gone into these university settings, and I it, primarily uh, Black American settings, and I've began to talk about uh, Margaret Sanger, and I look at blank stares because they they've never heard the name, they don't know who she is, and I I would suggest that if we're gonna go into a, a month of uh, Intent, intently looking at black history. Uh, let's talk about Margaret Sanger and let's talk about a, a racial agenda. Yeah, and I just want to echo what um, Matt's saying here about Margaret Sanger. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with who she was, but she basically started Planned Parenthood and her agenda, she would go into black churches and teach on sterilization, teach on, you know, uh, uh, population control and this seed this demonic seed has been sown and and we could see the fruit of it 
in our generation, we're seeing the fruit of it. If you look at the inner cities, there's a there's Planned Parenthood. You can find a Planned Parenthood anywhere. You learn in school, go to Planned Parenthood if you get pregnant. You know, just kill your baby, abort your baby. And and the thing is, it's a silent, uh, it's a silent decree. And we want to erase it. We want to raise the bar in the place of intercession and uh, and um educate the black community, specifically young adults. You need to understand that you have a destiny from God. That child in your womb has an assignment from the Lord. Yeah. And um, and and the enemy is trying to kill off our culture. Uh, we we were 14% of the population and now we're, uh, uh, 12, I believe it's 12% and we're decreasing at an increasing rate. And I'm telling you, I, I, I wanna talk to Christians. This is on the heart of God. This is an issue in the heart of God. Primary. And it's time, this is one of the primary issues issues on the heart of God and it's time Second Chronicles 714 says, if my people, I'm talking to Christians that are called by my name would humble themselves, pray and fast is seek his face, God would hear from heaven and he would heal our land we need healing in our land, we don't need big churches and more popular sermons, we need an awakening and we need to see abortion yeah. in our generation because I, I, I fear that uh, we will cease to exist. The enemy will take us out and we'll be facing another genocide, another, you, you know, it'll be worse than what we saw in, in Rwanda. So anyway, I just want to... Well, you know, uh, and, and, and I would add that, you know, a lot of people say, oh, to heaven, you're getting too spiritual. It's, you know, Planned Parenthood is providing a legitimate service, a needed service in, in my neighborhood. You don't know where I live. People would right. suggest that. I want to challenge you. Think about what I'm about to say. If the root is bad, the fruit will be bad. Think about this. If the root of Planned Parenthood is wicked, then w the fruit that it is producing now, you cannot claim it to be good. If the root's bad, the fruit will be bad. So we want to join. Uh, ask you guys to join us February 2nd to the 22nd. We're going on a freedom fast. Yeah. It's out of Isaiah 58, where it says, Is this not the fast that I've chosen to loose and to undo the heavy yoke? And so we want to cry out to God and ask Him for, for a, a revival. We want to ask that God would raise up thousands of voices to see abortion in America and see revival come to the black community. So just thank you guys for your time. And I ask that you take this into prayer and really seek the heart of God on this issue. Thank you.